five levels of polynomial equation. Level one. Here we have this linear equation, x plus 1 is equal to 0. We can just move the 1 to the other side and we get x is equal to negative 1. And then we are done. Good. Level 2. So now we have a quadratic equation, x squared plus x plus 1 is equal to 0. Well, let's go ahead and do this by completing a square. First, move the 1 to the other side, so we will have x squared plus x, and then that's equal to negative 1. And for this part right here, we are going to find the magic number, so we can complete the square. And to do so, we first make sure that we have a 1 in front of x squared, which we do. Then we see the coefficient of x, which is 1, and we will have to take half of that, and then square. Work this out, we will get 1 over 4. So this is the magic number. Now we have to add on both sides here and here. So the left hand side is going to give us x plus 1 half square. And then on the right hand side, this is going to give us negative 3 over 4. Now we can just take the square root on both sides, cancel this out, and then put on the plus or minus. On the left hand side, we get x plus 1 half. But let's prove the 1 half to the other side. So x will be equal to negative 1 over 2 plus or minus. Square root of 4 is just a 2 on the bottom. And then we have square root of negative, which is going to be the i, and then the 3, right? Still inside of the square root. So ladies and gentlemen, this right here is it. Great. Level 3. And now for this cubic equation, x cubed plus x squared plus x plus 1 is equal to 0, we don't have to use the cubic formula. We can actually just do this by factoring. Check this out. I'm going to do it by grouping. For these two terms, we can factor out the x squared, and then we will just get x plus 1. And for these two terms, we can just factor out like a 1, like this. And then we still have that x plus 1. And the nice thing is that the x plus 1 is in common, so we can factor that out like this, and then we will have that x squared plus 1 left. And this is still equal to 0. Now put this to be 0, and we also have to put this to be 0. So we see that right here, just move the 1 to the other side, x will be equal to negative 1. And right here, we can move the 1 to the other side, and take the square roots on both sides, and don't forget the plus or minus, Right here, we can get x is equal to plus or minus i. So we have a total of three answers, negative 1 and the i and also the negative i. Nice. Level 4. And now we have this quadratic equation. What do we even do? The quadratic formula? No, don't do that. Check this out. We are going to divide everybody by x squared, and you will see that this will work out very nicely. Split it and divide them individually, we get x squared plus x plus 1 plus 1 over x plus 1 over x squared, and that's equal to 0. Now, focus on the x squared plus 1 over x squared, because in fact, we can complete a square for them. Right here, I'm going to write down, we have x squared plus 1 over x, and then square. This is the sum of two squares. We can complete a square by adding a middle term. And the middle term is the following. First, we have that x squared. And then this right here is that 1 over x and then square. If we add 2 times this and that, which is actually just a number 2, right? This right here will give us the perfect square, namely x plus 1 over x and then square. Very nice. But of course, if we added this term, we will have to subtract it. And this is technically just what? 2. Right? It's just a number 2. So we just have to minus 2 at the end, like so. So now, for this and that, I'm going to replace it with this. So we have parentheses, x plus 1 over x, and then square. And let me just put a minus 2 all the way at the end right here. And then we have this x plus 1 over x as well. Very nice, huh? So let's go ahead and add x plus 1 over x. And then of course, we still have that plus 1 and minus 2, and that's equal to 0. In fact, we have a quadratic equation in terms of x plus 1 over x. So now let's just do a u substitution. Let u equal to x plus 1 over x. Because this way we can see that this is u squared plus u. And then this is just minus 1 and that's equal to 0. And because earlier we used the method of completing a square, so right now let's solve this by using the quadratic formula. So u is equal to negative 1 plus or minus square root of 1 squared minus 4 times this and that, which is going to be plus 4. So altogether is 5. 
and then all over two times one. Cool. You know what's cooler? This right here, when we take the positive, negative one plus square root of five over two. This right here is just the reciprocal of the golden ratio. And when we take the negative, we will get negative one minus square root of five over two. And this right here is just the negative golden ratio. All right, now we know that x plus one over x is equal to this or is equal to that. And we'll just solve them separately. And then right here, I'm just going to multiply everybody by x. And we will see this is x squared plus one and then that's equal to this. I'm going to move this to the other side so it becomes negative and then I will just keep the reciprocal of the golden ratio and then x and then the plus one here and that's equal to zero. And to solve this, let's just use the quadratic formula again. x is equal to negative b which is going to give us just positive and then plus or minus square root b squared, well, that will give us positive, but I'm just going to write, yeah, I'm just going to write it down like this. And then minus 4 times 1 times 1, which is just minus 4. And then all over 2 times 1. So from here, we have two answers. And then we will also have the negative golden ratio part. And then right here, let's just multiply everybody by x again. So we have the x squared, and then plus v times x and then plus one and that's equal to zero use the quadratic formula again x is equal to negative v plus or minus square root and then we have the v square and then minus four times this and that which is minus four all over two excellent level five Finally, we have this quintic equation, and of course, I'll show you guys the quintic formula, which says x is equal to... Just kidding. Unfortunately, there's no such a formula. And in fact, for this equation, we can solve it by factoring, by grouping the first three terms and then the last three terms, and we can go from there. But we did that earlier, so I'll show you guys something else. Let's actually multiply this equation by x minus 1. When we multiply the left hand side, we will just get x to the 6th power minus 1. And then the right hand side will still give us 0. However, notice that though, this equation has a total of 6 solutions, but originally we only have 5. And the reason is because we multiply out an extra factor. So we just have to indicate that, look at this, but x cannot be equal to 1. All right? And now what's so good about solving this? Well. We can move this to the other side, so we just have to look at x to the 6th power is equal to 1. In fact, we are just trying to find all the 6th roots of 1, but we are not going to count x equal to 1 as a solution. And to do so, we can utilize complex numbers. Take 1 to the complex world, so I'll put that down right here for you guys. 1 is right here, and then write this in the polar form, we need two things. The first thing is the distance from the origin to here which is just 1, and then the next thing is the angle. By looking at this, the angle is 0. However, we can keep rotating 2 pi or the other way, 2 pi, right? So we just have to add 2 um, pi, where n is an integer. So in fact, for the 1, we can just look at this right here. x to the 6th power is equal to r is 1, and then we have the e, and then i times theta. So i times 2 um, pi, like this. Now, we want to get the x, right? So let's just take both sides to the 1 over 6 power, like so. And this and that will cancel. So we are going to get x being equal to... We can divide, reduce, and all that stuff. So this is going to be e, and then we will just have i, and then m pi over 3. But what are the ends though? Well, keep this in mind. When we want to find the sixth root of 1, all we have to do is plug in n is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and that's it. If you continue, they will just give you duplicate the answers from here. So don't do that. And right here, notice that we are not going to use 0 because if so, we will get e to the zeroth power, and that's 1. And we say x is not equal to 1. 
So now we just have to plug in this right here. So ladies and gentlemen, x is equal to plugging 1 into n, we will get e to the pi over 3i. And of course, you can use the Euler's formula to write the expression in the standard form, but I'm just going to leave it like this. And then next, we will have e to the 2 pi over 3i, and then e to the 3 pi over 3, which is just pi, and then i, which is actually just negative 1. And then e to the 4 pi over 3i, and lastly, e to the 5 pi over 3i. Alright? Very, very cool. Here are the 5 solutions to the original equation. Awesome.